Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part two of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley. So a quick recap in part one, we talked a little bit about what the kit was, what was in the box and what I plan on doing with it. So in this episode, we're going to start working on it. And we're gonna start with step one. Okay, and just as a quick aside, um, I'm going to do like I usually do on step-by-step -step builds. I will demonstrate how I cut off and clean up parts on the first few parts, then I'll do the rest off camera so you're only having to watch me do assembly. If there is repetitive assembly going on, um, I usually do that off camera. I'll do one thing, say it's a road wheel, and then I will do the rest off camera, but I think I may do uh, time lapse for those, just so you can see what's going on, even though it's gonna be highly sped up. But if you don't see them, it means I decided not to do that. So anyway, that's it. Let's get cracking. First things first, I need the hull, and then I need to assemble some wheels and whole parts. So I'm going to start with part E26. So again, I will demonstrate the first piece, sprue E26. So what I do is I just cut it somewhat away from the, unless it's a really short one like that, cut it off like that. And then I will get up close and cut it off like that. Are you recording? Then just a quick hit of the sanding stick to make sure everything's flat and flush. Whoops. Like that. And let's do a little bit of zoom action there. Okay, that's ready to glue on. So, this is a good time to talk glues. I basically use two types of glues. To me, extra thin and Model Master liquid cement for plastic models. The difference being this is ultra thin. This is a liquid cement, but it's thicker. And I like to use it for stuff like this with a lot of surface area. I'll just put that on there like that. Put it in place. And then once I have it in place, then I will use my extra thin, put along the edges and allow it to seep in and get it nice and flush all the way around. Do the same thing down here. Just run it along the edge. And then the same thing here, like that. That way I get a nice strong bond all the way around. So with that glued into place, then it is time to whoops, not too far. Um I need to cut off B61 and A47 for this side, B62 and A47 on this side. And it says, B61 and B62, glue those on first, 
than a 47. So let me cut both A47s off. Like that. And then, wow, just caused a catastrophe. Gonna be decided to drop in. Isn't that great? Okay, so let's see. 61 goes on that side. So what are the oh boy? B61 on that side. B62 on this side. The same thing as before I just cut it really close sand it so there's not a little bit of residual sprue gate like that and do the rest on the other parts and following the instructions glue this on first and what I like to do on these is if there's holes on the inside like right here that are open I like to apply my cement that way because that way it doesn't mar the outside surface down on an armored vehicle, it's not as not as uh, critical, but it's just a habit I like to do. So we'll do that one and that one. Do the same thing. Now, one of the things about to me, extra thin. For those of you who watch my videos all the time, um, you've probably heard this ad nauseum, but I like to bring it up. To me, extra thin. Now you can use it however you want, and I see people do it, and it worked great the way I'm going to describe. But oftentimes people will take the part, And put the cement on the part like this okay and then they'll bumble around trying to get it into position and by the time they get it in position this cement evaporates really really quickly now it can't be done because watch I'll do it right here and it'll probably work okay See, it'll stick into place, but it doesn't create as good a bond as you could have because it's evaporated so much. So, the best way to do it is, is to do like this. Put the part in place. And then using your handy dandy applicator here, you apply it along the edge and it will capillary action or capillary action as some people say will pull the cement along the joint the seam and it will give you a nice strong bond so that is the proper way to use to me extra thin and again lots of people don't do it like that and lots of people glue a whole model together doing the other way and that's fine but I do it like this as do lots of other people okay that'll give you a nice strong bond 
you don't have to worry about parts popping off later, especially when you're doing stuff like armor where there's a lot of harsh weathering and scrubbing and stuff like that. So there you go. All right, so there's that. That is part 61 and 62. Next thing I want to do is part 69 and 70, B69 and 70. And the reason I want to do those is because uh, let's see we got 70 goes on this side 69 on this side same thing as before now this is something you don't see very often on Tamiya parts anymore. Still have the part mold or the part number molded on the part as well as on the sprue tree itself. Okay, so you got a number of holes here. Now here's something interesting to note is there's a part 67 and 68 and it uses different holes than this does. These parts use these holes that are all the way open. So that's just something you want to take note of. Same thing, cement from the inside. And then just because some around the outside edge like that nice strong bond same on this side like that So that takes care of 69 and 70. So the next thing I need to do is cut off parts A, 38, 39, and 40 for both sides of the hull. So let's get those. So we got 38. Thirty-nine and forty. And once those are all cut off, the next thing I need to do is clean up the edges with a sanding stick or a reasonable facsimile. And here's the reason why: because the way these kits were molded back in the old days. You might not be able to see it, but the outside edge is really super sharp compared to the inside edge, and it's just an unnatural sharpness that needs to be um, knocked down a little bit. And uh, with these real small wheels, there's no real easy way to do it, so I just kind of grip them like this and then just go around like that. all the way around and then once I've done that there'll be a little bit of a fuzzy edge I'll take my knife and just kind of knock it down a little bit you can do it with a sanding stick but I like to use a knife like that. So I need to do that to all of these wheels. And 
after they, they're sanded, then I can glue glue these together. So an A40 and A39 go together like this. Make sure it's bottomed out on the contact point there. Make sure it's firmly affixed. Like that. Right there. Okay, so those are glued together. So the next thing to do is to glue these onto the hull. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I normally leave all the running gear off uh, whenever I build an armor kit. But in this case, since all, virtually everything except for the lower road wheels are going to be hidden behind the side skirts, I am going to go ahead and glue these on here. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is again using this cement here. What I'm going to do is put a little dot on the end. This is the part that comes in contact with the vehicle. And that is what I'm going to put the cement on. Like, whoops, like that. And just look and make sure it's even though it's going to be hidden I still want to be perpendicular like that go ahead and do the other side since I've already got glue on the axles same thing with the center road wheel or uh, return rollers they stick out a little bit further so it's gonna be a little bit trickier to make sure that it's squared up with the hull For those of you in the Europe's and or other countries outside the U.S., you're equivalent to this Model Master liquid cement. From what I hear tell is uh, the Ravel Contacta in the blue in the blue container. Same idea. All right, so that finishes step one. So for step two, it's the road wheels, idler wheels, and the drive sprockets. So we have parts A37, A13, 28, 29, 14, and 15. So cutting them off of the sprue is exactly the same as it was with the other parts specifically the road wheels or the uh, return rollers so I'm going to cut these off get them glued together and then show you how I'm going to clean them up okay well, a real quick note here on cutting the drive sprocket um, sprue gates here or whatever you call them the residual if you look closely and you may not be able to see it in the video but you can see the outline of the tooth where the sprue attachment point is on this side. On this side you can't. So what you want to do is if you've got a good cutter, you just want to line your cutter up with the angle of the tooth like that and cut it off. 
Then all it takes is just a very gentle swipe of the sanding stick to get it to look like the rest of the drive sprocket teeth. Next thing I need to do is get the poly caps before I start gluing this stuff together. So in the instructions it says for the wheels to use the poly cap short. So those are all these right here. Long ones are on the end. I think those are probably for the main gun trunnion. So I need get a quick count here. So I need two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. And that's all of them basically. So I just drop one in each one of these. And then start gluing all these together. So they fit together pretty good. Like that. So Put them together. Like that. Just start gluing. Now with the idlers, it's a little bit different because there's a slot here. And a corresponding pin there. So they need to be glued together like that. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this here cement just like I did on earlier. Here's a cool thing. This, these poly caps are made out of a vinyl material, so you don't have to worry about them sticking if a little bit of glue gets on there. So I wouldn't sweat it too much. Besides, it's not really crucial that the idlers roll, but they will. Okay, and then these, same thing. It's got a notch, a little pin there. And for this one, I can put cement like this. And this. Now is it interesting, well maybe not too interesting, but somewhat <laughs> note on these road wheels or these drive sprockets here. If you notice these are hex shaped and that is a throwback to the motorized kits of yesteryear because the axles would have a, like a hex fitting on the end of it that would fit in here, which allowed these to be powered and not slip on the axle. So there you go, a little bit of Tamiya history for you. And once that is done, it's time to sand these things. So these aren't as bad as those little wheels because the mold seam line is back a little bit from the edge on both wheels. So this is the way that I handle it. So what I use is a piece of sandpaper and basically this is uh, this is alpha abrasives made in Canada it's basically a wet or dry sandpaper I bought this at my local big box hobby retailer 
Hobby Lobby. And uh, for this fairly decent pack, it's $9.99. Now, just regular hardware store grade stuff is probably, I'm sure, cheaper. But this is nice because they're already kind of compact in size and goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. But using 600, I find it's good enough without leaving too deep of scratches. I take the wheel and I roll it like that and watch my family cringe as it makes that weird squeaky sound. Oh. So basically I just do that all the way around until those seams the mold seam marks are gone. I find this way works a little bit better than trying to use, especially on these bigger ones, than trying to use a, because there's less likelihood that you're going to get a flat spot in your wheel. So I just roll it like that. So, not in the time lapse, but I did the same thing with these uh, return, or with these uh, idlers. So, that concludes step number two, and all of the road wheels. So, the next part is supposed to be putting the road wheels on the mud flaps, idlers, drive sprocket, and the tailgate. Now the wheels I'm not going to put on right now because uh, I want to paint those separately from the hull. So those I will just set aside in the box for later skewering on stakes so it can all be painted together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off parts B11, B12, 26, 44, and 30. So 44. Alright, first I'll do the um, mud flaps. And you'd be hard pressed to put them on the wrong side if you didn't pay attention to which number was which because um, there's a uh, large pin and a small pin so it's only going to fit a certain way. See like that. Fits right on there no problem. So I'm going to do that. And that. And then this one. This one, one of the holes is a little bit tapered, so I need to pour it out just a little yeah perfect the whole item just a little bit of mold residual mold plastic not really flash but because of the taper of the hole wasn't quite fitting okay so we got that so both the mud flaps are in place so then We've got this here and these parts here. So again, you know, I guess you could get them mixed up, but it'd be kind of tough because the illustration surely clearly shows that these extra slots are near the bottom. Now, keep in mind this is an upside down illustration. There's an angle edge and these details in there. So it fits like this. Again, I am going to 
blew it from. the back like this just make sure it's pressed firmly into place You can see a little bit of uh, cement oozing outside. I may have to clean that up or I may not, but we'll see. And then same on the other side. This side there's a little bit of imperfection along this edge so it's not allowing the part to sit flat so I'm gonna smooth that off try it again yeah it's better whoops cement right there make sure it's flat just like that okay so that takes care of that part there now once that has had a chance to set up a bit It goes on here like this. Just make sure everything lines up. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to start with the bottom here. Glue this first. over here so what I'm going to do is to ensure this is all squared up got some cement in there I'm going to use a clamp and I'm going to squeeze this part together here make sure that these here are lined up and while it is clamped put some more cement there and there and there and there just to make sure all that is nice and snug Let that set up for a minute or two. 
once that is dry and ready to go, move on to the next part, which is step number four, which is assembling the rear door and the landing ramp and associated trinkets there on. So let's do the door first, which is 63, 64, and 65. And the way this goes together is again we've got large and small pins so this door goes here and fits on there and there's supposed to be a gap around it like that so I'm gonna do this one like I did the other one and I'm gonna use a little bit of this first And then a little bit of, mm, it's probably not necessary. Yeah, I'm not gonna put any extra thin on that, I don't need to. And then this here, same thing, large pin, small pin, so you can't get it really mixed up. Like that. A little bit around the edges. that and viola the door is done so next I need to cut off B 34 and 35 and glue those together pretty easy to figure out which way this one goes There's some pins on the corners and then these little rails to help get everything lined up, theoretically. Oh, you know what, before I do that, there's a little bit of a flash here from the ejector pins. Okay. Just like that. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. there. Make sure that's all squeezed together. I'm also going to do some in the center here on the inside of the door frame. While that's setting up, I'm going to cut off the toe pintle, which is B41. Right there. And then I need to cut 
cut off A42, each of A44 and A45. <clears throat> All right. So here's the way these things work. The A44 and 45, they form the hinge for the back ramp. Now, the thing is... It's not as crucial with uh, this as it is with the kit that has um, interior detail. But what this does is it allows the back to open. So... just goes on there like that and the way it's shaped the humped part goes that way faces up with the towards the outside of the ramp so I'm basically just using these tweezers to hold it in place and there's a pin in there Hold it together or to, to line it up. So we got that, and then this goes in there like that. Let's make sure it's lined up properly. Little more cement there and there's that so the next thing is this tow rope so let's cut that off and take a look at it so after it's cleaned up it looks pretty good and I think I'll just use what came in the box so it goes like there's two uh, pins there, and it fits just like that. So I'll need to, uh, oops, oh my goodness, there we go, that and that. to glue all those into position and hold them down so I glued the actual hook or uh, eye parts on first I'm gonna let that dry really good and then I'll twist this over to where I want it and glue the rest so I'm gonna let that sit for a bit with that with the eye parts dry I can now glue the actual brackets themselves like that Hold that in place. And while I'm holding that, then I can glue the other ones. Like that. There we go.
with all of the clamps glued down, I can now glue the door on. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be real careful because I don't want the glue to squish out the sides. So I'm going to focus mainly right here. there and there and let it just it's basically just going to hold it right on the very edges because I don't want to uh, I don't want it to look like this is molded on part of the bag so there that is so that concludes step four next up is uh, part A46 and you position it according to if you're going to have the door open or closed. Well, it's closed in this case, so I will want to have the lever pointing down. So let's get A46 and glue it on like that. So there we go. Handle's glued. So the next part is to actually glue it onto the back of the vehicle along with B14, B13, A43, E14, A43. It's a lot of parts, so I'm going to cut those off. All right, all parts are cut off. So the first thing I'm going to glue in after looking at how all this goes together is part E14. Got it all sanded smooth and everything, and it goes right on the side right there like that so first thing I'm going to do put a little cement on there like that make sure it's bottomed out good and make sure it is there we go nice and flat with the uh, this part on the side and then I'm going to put a little bit more cement and I'll take a look later on before I paint to see if I need to fill that in. It'll probably be covered up by the tracks, so I should be good, but I'll look at it then. So there's that. Then the next part I'm going to glue into place is going to be the drop gate here. And those fit in there like that. Make sure it's push down. Let's see. I think what I'll do is I'm going to tack it with my tester cement first. Tack it in place and then run some to me extra thin. So I want to make sure that that is firmly in place ah it ain't firmly in place obviously make sure it is fumbling about here all right sorry about all that bumbling about but <clears throat> this is almost one of those things that takes three hands whoa 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 overdid it I'm glad that's on the bottom Okay, so the trick is to keep this thing pressed up against the back because <clears throat> I don't know if it's warped. Or what. <clears throat> it seems to be flexed a little bit. So I'm going to hold this here for a minute. Then I'll come back and glue more of 
the round parts. One thing I remember about this kit from um, when I built a similar version, which basically these parts are the same, um, was that the gate closes quite snugly. So you don't have to worry about it just popping open if you have the one with the uh, interior detail. But since I don't have interior detail on this one, I am going to glue it because I don't want it just popping open. There ain't no need for it. So, a little bit there and there. And just to make sure it's nice and snugly, I'm gonna clamp it. Not Jed clamp it, but just clamp it. Okay. Once that's dry, then it's just a matter of there's two holes, two pins on each storage box. Oh, that one didn't go there. So it's just a matter of holding them in place. A little dab of glue like this. The reason I'm doing it like this is that way it's allowing it to run around and not create any you know, um, melted plastic to come out of the edge. Just like that. And then same thing here. that looks good so there we go then just a matter of taking these two tail light assemblies and those fit there on the top Hold it up against that back plate. <clears throat> a little cement there and a little bit there. Same thing on this side. There and there. Ta-da. Okay. So there we go. <clears throat> so that gets us up to step five, which completes the lower hull. Step six, we begin on the upper hull. So I'm going to call it right there for part two of the Tamiya 135th scale. M2 A2 Bradley. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. And uh, as always, if you have any hints, tips, any experience with this kit maybe, or just some general observations, please put them in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And consider if you enjoy this uh, content that I've been putting out, maybe hit the like button. And, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe subscribe if you like watching this kind of stuff. If you like torturing yourself. So that's it. Plastic Models by Regular Dude. Thanks for watching this episode. Till next time, I will see you all later.